as well, and they've just brought that with them to Hamilton. The bookends been a big factor in the improvement for the Cats this year. Some room now for Arlan Bruce. And a penalty flag. 48-yard line, just as Bruce was about to make that cut. And you always question with the receivers blocking out on the edges. You assume it's going to have something to do with the block, perhaps a illegal block or a hold out on the perimeter. Holding Hamilton number 87. That's a 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. Now I understand though, because you are an expert not only in football but in eating, that Alexander Goche and you, and I, I believe Jay McNeil. Very true. Had a little chow down a <laughs> few years ago. Was it a pasta thing? We went, we went head to head. We were eating. eating. We were eating ribs. I'll tell you, McNeil and I tapped out at the same time. We were exhausted. We had the meat sweats going. Goche looked like he could have gone for a few more rats easily. Horner has some time and throws it away wisely. This is something that Quentin Porter might not have done last year. Might have thrown it into traffic. Yeah, a sure sign of, of the maturation of a quarterback. And sometimes you don't worry about always trying to have a completion. Sometimes you, you cut your losses, avoid a sack, avoid taking a hit. Just get rid of the football and let's move on with the next play. Good decision by Quinton Porter. What you left out about that story, just to finish it, how many ribs are we talking about? Are we talking about a factory <laughs> full, a, it's, a it's, truckload it's best full, that we not a stadium that. full? Second and 20. Porter again, good protection. Spins now on Quinton Porter. He's one downfield and out of bounds for Prichet Rodriguez. And Porter had some running room there too. To show his mobility. Once again, the Cats will kick. A little surprised not to see Quinton Porter take the opportunity to run on that play. Heard Jock Fine mentioned in the pregame about Porter's decision making in running situations. Not a guy who runs just for the sake of running, but running when he recognizes that he can. It did look like he had a little bit of room to go there. Short, 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 short. short kick. Out of bounds at the 42 yard line. We'll come back to Hamilton. Coming up later, Winnipeg Blue Bombers in Calgary, McMahon Stadium to take on the Stampeders. Second part of our Saturday night doubleheader. TSN home of the Grey Cup. Last night, the BC Lions moving to two and four, making it even more muddled in the CFL West. Saskatchewan losing last night. How about that dribbled to touchdown, the little kick by James Urichuk and then O'Neill Wilson. Yeah, veteran move by a rookie, James Urichuk on that play. I have a feeling now that everybody knows about the dribbling, we might see a little more of that this season. Ray going deep now. Stamps is open. Fred Stamps down to the 15-yard line. Knocked out at the 18. And immediately, Ricky Ray, another big play here to Fred Stamps. Uh, Ricky Ray can sometimes float you to sleep with a lot of the passes underneath. Similar to the Montreal Alouettes offense, that high percentage stop, usually a fairly quick release from Ricky Ray. That defense starts counting on the ball being thrown short, and all of a sudden, just as you go to sleep on him, Fred Stamps goes deep for a big gainer. To the red zone again. Much to the chagrin of Greg Marshall, the defensive coordinator for the Cats. Play action. Ray goes corner again, this time for Peterson, but an overthrow. Chris Thompson all over him. I made reference earlier to Kamau Peterson perhaps channeling Jason Tucker running the corner routes when the Eskimos get into the red zone. Jason Tucker, of course, the longtime Eskimo great, made that his signature route. Is now the Eskimos receivers coach and appears to have uh, taught his pupils well. Jason Tucker, whose career unfortunately came to an end right here at Iberwind Stadium. Gray in some trouble. And 
thrown to the turf. Garrett McIntyre got to him just as he released the football. And Garrett first, McIntyre has been a good acquisition for the Cats. Well, he sure has. You know, the first word everybody says when they talk about Garrett McIntyre, you'll see him up at the top of your screen, is he has a tremendous motor. That just means he keeps going, he keeps working, he never quits on a play. You see it here. Fights past the tackle, Calvin Armstrong. As Ricky Ray tries to step up to throw, it's McIntyre who comes in to disrupt things a little bit. Well, Prefontaine's only missed once so far this season. This from the 29-yard line. A little chip shot for him and straight through the uprights. Hamilton holds Edmonton to a field goal, but the Eskimos have a 12-0 lead. We saw a shutout last night. Don't even say. In, in Montreal, don't tell me that we might be on the verge of back-to-backs. This Hamilton team, of course, last season, all the talk was surrounding the three-headed monster, three stars, Casey Printers, Zeke Moreno, and Jesse Lumsden. These are the media guides. Last year's the left, and the left is uh, the 2008 guide on the right. This is this year's rather anonymous guide. Well, it sure is. Last year, Jesse Lumsden, Casey Printers, Zeke Moreno, the guys seen as the face of this franchise a year ago. Now this year, the Cats a little more non-committal in terms of that, as all three of those guys have moved on. This, of course, would have been Jesse Lumsden's return to Hamilton had he not been injured in the opening week of the season. Zeke Moreno, of course, we saw him last night. Now a Toronto Argonaut was with Winnipeg, and Casey Printers still looking for work. flying as he advances the ball to the 37 yard line likely will come back and against the Hamilton return team Holder. here Hamilton number 34 10 yard penalty first down so that one goes against the rookie out of Laval Dio Malau Camus the Cats have got to get it going here before they dig themselves into too deep a hole. Again, that was their Achilles heel. In the preseason in week one, they fell behind early. And even with the second half comeback, were unable to win football games. Deandre Kopp. Bullseye on him for that front four. Andre Cobb try to do to the Edmonton Eskimos what he's been doing to the BC Lions this season. Look at the numbers. Yeah, certainly the Lions are glad that their season series with the Hamilton Tiger Cats and DeAndre Cobb in particular is over and done with. But you talk about these teams trying to prove something here tonight. That's a little bit of the case for Cobb. He's had the two huge games against one team. Not nearly the same level of success in the other two games. So he's looking to, to prove that he can do that week in and week out. Porter. Here's the catch and there's the first down. Harlan Bruce again. And he is much more active tonight. Marcel Belfe gave us a little hint before the game. Said too, you know, that Bruce was used so much as a wide out in Toronto. Using him more inside here in the Hamilton offense. Yeah, well, the, the big thing of the similarity between what Arlen Bruce is going to do is he's going to play primarily as a spot to the wide side of the field, and that has been his primary position throughout his career. So at least he gets a little bit of a comfort zone moving into a new offense and joining new teammates. Corner on the play action. Chris Davis hauls it in. Chris Davis has been the Cats' leading receiver this season. And really very quietly up among the league leaders. Chris Davis entered week six as number six in the league in, in receiving yardage. A nice addition to the tie Cats lineup late last season. He's found nice chemistry with his quarterback, Clinton Porter. Quick one again, a little hot read to Arlan Bruce. Another first down. 
And this was the point I was making earlier about the Hamilton Tiger Cats. For anybody who's questioned their record and the, the validity of it in the early portion of the season, here you see Bruce lined up as a slot, this time working to the short side of the field or the side nearest the boundary. Just runs a hook route, just runs five, six yards, stops, turns around and looks for the ball against zone coverage. And lets his legs do the rest to pick up first down yardage. Cats on the move. Almost the same play. Only to Chris Davis. And the spot will mean another tie cat first down. And you wonder if the Tiger Cat spotters up in the booth have seen something over on that short side of the field in that particular coverage that has caused them to, to start going to work over there a little bit in the last couple of plays. Wondering if the halfback Lenny Williams is taking a particularly deep drop that's allowing them to catch a couple of balls in front of them. Rodriguez on the short side now. Porter looks right for Bruce again. Arlon Bruce starting to shred this Edmonton secondary. Arlon Bruce. Well, this is a nice response in very timely fashion by the Hamilton Tiger Cats offense. A good drive after Edmonton extends their lead to 12 points. But the key, now with the ball at the 23-yard line, they need to finish. Seven catches already for Arlan Bruce here so far tonight. Play action. And hanging on is Chris Davis. Not a well-thrown football, but down to the 15-yard line. Once again, let's go to the sideline. Here's Claude. While things are good for the Eskies on offense, uh, not so good on defense as far as personnel. Maurice Lloyd uh, looks like he came up lame. He was late for a, an assignment on a uh, kick uh, return and uh, pulled up lame going in. It was even worse coming off. He's had it wrapped. That's the left hamstring. And right now, it doesn't appear like he'll be back. I guess uh, we'll try to get further information as we go back to you guys. Quentin Porter scrambling, making something out of nothing. Marwan Hage. Yeah, you have to love the calm under pressure from Quinton Porter here. The high snap threw off the timing of the handoff. Quinton Porter's got to make a split-second decision. Do I try and carry this play out as planned and hand the ball to my running back? No, just react. Just play football. He takes off around the edge. Nice job by Arlen Bruce to peel back and get a block on the defensive end, Drake Peach. And spring Quinton Porter, as you said, making something out of nothing. There you see rookie, or second-year middle linebacker, the Canadian, Tim St. Pierre. He's the man thrown into the fire with the injury to Maurice Lloyd. Calm now, DeAndre Cole scores, touchdown! Capping a great drive for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. DeAndre Cole, looking like he's for real. Little guy does it again, his fourth touchdown of the season. On the board. And look at the job here done by the Tiger Cats offensive line. Front side of this play is to the left. Or, excuse me, the offensive right. Cobb starts off that way. Nice cutback lane as Gauthier and Diakowski on the left wash their men hard to the right. Creating an easy lane for Cobb to the end zone. DeAndre Cobb again. Zig zags over the line. End zone. 12-7 Eskimos.